City strife, horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun spin, and move the horses in to the barn, and time to move them out again. There's parsley pastures beautiful with my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This life pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Hello, welcome back. Um, last time I made the little jacket from this pattern, and today I'm going to make the dress. Now, this dress is for my daughter, so I will not be modeling it, but I'm going to visit her, so hopefully I'll be able to get a snapshot. You never know. Um, but I am going to be making this dress, assuming that it's going to fit. But I'm gonna be making it one size larger than I normally would, just because it's a lot easier to take something in then let something out and make something bigger if you've clipped seam allowances really close if you know what I mean. So that's my plan. She is petite so I will be doing all the standard petite um, adjustments to the pattern and I might be shortening the skirt even more because that's how she likes it. And these models, you know, they usually make this for a model that's 5'7". Well, for someone that's 5 foot, that's a little bit different, so you have to make some adjustments. So, the jacket that I made last time, navy blue, very dark, linen, you know, it looked beautiful, but it was very hard to follow because the fabric was so dark I'm really sorry, it was hard to see all those stitches. So, here's what has happened. I have made another jacket out of a rose-colored knit. Uh, it is this fabric. And yes, it is knit, and yes, the fab pattern does not call for knit, but am I ever gonna let that change my mind? No, it's not. So, I have made that jacket. It's up on my dress form, and I'll show it to you later. And I'm gonna be making the dress out of the same rose-colored knit fabric. So the stitches should be more visible this time, I'm hoping. Now, I haven't really looked at the directions for the dress yet, but it does call for the equal amount of lining fabric that it does for the dress fabric. So I'm assuming it is fully lined. So I will be using my Bimber Gray on fabric, which is very breathable. And uh, so that should be good. So I'm gonna have a woven a woven lining with a knit outer fashion fabric. But it's a fairly substantial knit. It does have stretch, but it's a fairly substantial knit, so I think it's gonna be fine. So let me uh, get the pattern pieces out, tip the camera down, and we'll just get started making those alterations. Just now I was reading the envelope and it does call for an invisible zipper and it wants you to use 14 inch. Well, I don't have a 14 inch invisible zipper um, that would go with this. The closest I had in the pink shade was like this really, really light pastel pink. And I didn't want to use that. Um, I'm gonna go darker and this is longer. I think this is a 20 inch zipper but honestly, I'd rather use something slightly longer. I can always shorten it as I go, you know, but having a longer back zipper to get into isn't necessarily a bad thing as long as, and I'll show you this again, you don't want the end of your zipper to be at the widest point of your rear because it just sticks out. Nobody likes that. So I digress. I'm using the darker one because it shouldn't be seen first of all, because it is an invisible zipper. And if it is, if it's darker, it'll look more like the shadow of a seam. And if it was a lighter one, I'm afraid it would stick out like a, a light colored line. So that's my reasoning for using a longer, darker zipper. Okay, so with that aside, this is a princess seam dress with several long panels. 
we have a center front, side front, side back, and center back. Okay, so pretty much what I'm going to be doing to one panel, I'm going to be doing to all of them because they all match up together. Okay, so first of all, this is a skirt pattern that I made her a while back, if you remember this one. Okay, it's a lovely little pattern. Um, but I do know that the length of this skirt with the hem designated on it is the finish length that she wanted. So if I put this pattern up here matching up waistline to waistline and go down to the bottom, it looks like if you could see that this piece is about an inch longer than this piece and they both have um, a similar size hem, okay? But if I move this, I can see that within this area, there is a one inch petite adjustment in here. So I think if I just make the petite adjustments, um, everything is going to be just fine. Hang on, I got too many pieces of paper here. So on the dress, there's two different adjustments. There is one up in the torso, one down here closer to hip level, all right? And, you know, you know your body, everyone is different. Some people are, they're shorter, but they have a regular length torso and just short legs. Some people are petite all the way around. Some people have a very short torso and longer legs. You figure out you. For my daughter, I am going to be shortening both of them. Okay, so we want shorter legs, shorter torso. And so what you do is basically, I love this pattern because they have this, most patterns don't, but this is a very good illustration. Even if your pattern doesn't have one, this is a good thing. So um, there's fold line and you just fold it and bring it up to the top fold line. And that's gonna take out an inch here. And put another piece of tape here. Okay, so that shortens the torso by one inch. And then down here in the hip level, if I fold it at the bottom fold line, bring it up to the top, basically making a pleat here, and then tape that, that is shortening the hip level by an inch. Okay, which is good. So I'm gonna go ahead and make these same two adjustments. They give you this option on all of the pieces. You'll have an upper and a lower. Again, you do you, I'm doing both of them. And then once I have all of that done, I will be cutting it out of my knit fabric first. I'm just getting my fabric out here on my table and it's, you know, finicky as knits are. And I've had some questions on how I make sure that my knits are straight because sometimes the way that they're rolled on the bolt is not straight and so the way that they cut it won't be straight. See this? That is not on grain. That is one is too far ahead of the other. Okay. I was I had it matched up at the beginning so this is not matched up. This is not on grain. So if you get down here and your fold is giving you fits it's because usually the two are not on grain. So like for this one, I can tell the lines are pulling this way. So that means that the top one is too far ahead that way. If the lines were pulling that way, that would mean the top one was too far behind that way. But it's this way. So up here at the top, and for me, it's a trial and error. If I move it over a little bit, let's see if it was too far ahead. Thinking again. And this wants to just cling to itself. Okay, so I have it matched up differently at the top now and I'm shaking it down and now it's perfectly smooth. So it's for me that's the best way to do it is based on having this fold look nice these uh, selvage edges matching up, okay? And then just keep moving these wherever you need to to get that fold matched up. So at this point, you can see it's about, what is that, three inches that I had to adjust it over. So 
That's my two cents. There's probably a more scientific way, but that's the way that works for me. Okay, so this is my lining, my Bemberg rayon, and I need to pull a piece off of this bolt and wash it. I like to pre-wash and pre-dry my rayon. Some people says it shrinks. Some people say it don't. It don't. It doesn't. Um, I like to err on the side of caution, so I do like to pre-wash anything that's washable. So I actually already did, before I made my jacket, pre-wash um, the knit. So it's already done, but I wanted to show you. At the same time that I was making the blue jacket, I was making this one on a different machine in my room because this is knit, so it needed a ballpoint needle, it needed a different thread. So I want to show you, this is the little machine I was making her on. This is an adorable little machine. It is a new home machine from 1894. I got her on my treadle cabinet. Um, yeah, I can guarantee this is the first time this machine has ever sewed knits, but I was able to put in a uh, ballpoint needle and get her started and it worked great. So for the um, jacket though, she did not like doing multiple layers of knit. Um, you know how at the hems and everything, there was multiple, multiple layers. So I ended up, um, you know, I, I used the machine to sew her together, but then I did a hand finishing on here, you know, which is fine. I think that's lovely too. A little difference, a little interest. So um, I am not going to be using the new home over there for this project because I um, I will have my Meister available. So I'm going to move the thread that matches this fabric over there. But I just wanted to show you this sweet little machine. She is adorable. I love her to bits. I've been calling her Bella Blue because of her sweet little blue. And that is a blue little, little blue bird with hummingbird and everything on her. So there you go. Okay, so I have just taken a quick look at the instructions because I usually don't, so this is a good thing. Um, and it looks like the general concept is that we sew the entire dress, the outside, but don't attach the shoulders, so it's like one big cylinder, and put the invisible zipper in at that point. And then sew the lining dress, again, is like a big cylinder. And then when you combine the two, then you sew the shoulders and the underarm and everything to combine them. So I think that's going to work. Um, I am going to go ahead. My lining is in the washer right now, but I got plenty of time and I'm going to work on my, my knit fabric first. So the first piece I'm going to be using is my piece number six. Um, I am not going to be surging around this because it is a knit, so it's not going to unravel. So I don't need to worry about that. So I'm going to come in here and clip my notches. And there are a couple little dots up here. Well, you cannot see that where I'm pointing. There is a dot here and one in the center front. I need to clip this notch. This is for shoulder placement. Um, let me go ahead and get these circles marked. And again, I am going to mark it like I usually do. I mean, get my little piece of scrap leather, which is starting to get worn out. I'll have to get a new one soon out here. Place it underneath the tissue paper on top of the fabric and punch out the circle for my size. Do the same thing down here. And if I was marking this triangle, I would do that. This triangle is going to land right where all the seams intersect. Um, so I'll just be observant that that's where it is. Just ran over to my ironing board to do a little test on a scrap where I mark it with my heat erasable pen, iron it, make sure it disappears completely. And it does. So I can feel safe in just reaching through the circles that I just punched with my heat erasable pen to go ahead and make those marks. Um, let me take the tissue paper off, mark this one on the other side, and then we're going to be stay stitching this between, oh, where are we stay stitching to? 
hang on one second. It gives like this odd placement. Okay, so usually they have you stay stitch between notches or something. They're not doing that. They want you to stay stitch from the top up here to the waistline. And I guess they're not giving you a specific point because everybody's waistline seems to be different because of all of the adjustments. So with that, I can see that this is my waistline here. So I am just going to draw a little line where that is. Basically, it's below where all of the curve of the princess seam is going to be. Okay, so from the very top to about waistline level, after everything is marked, do a row of straight stitch um, at about a half inch seam allowance. Okay, so there's my stay stitching. Hope you can see it. Um, I'm going to set this piece aside and get my side front piece out. And I need to clip all of the notches on this piece first. Okay, so here are my side fronts, my center front. I need to match these two side fronts up. And there are notches, excuse me, two notches that I need to match up here. So the first thing that I did was match up my two sets of notches right here. And then I'm going to pin everything above, you know, matching that little step out area to the top of my side front. And then I will pin together everything below this. And then after I get everything above this notch pinned together and everything below, then we'll form the curve. Okay, so now I have this laying so my center front is on top with my stay stitching. And if I can get this to lay flat, you can see the bottom layer wants to curve out. That is the princess seam. Now, mine is a knit, so it wants to flex anyway. But where, if this was a woven, and I'm going to do it anyway, um, I would be clipping every couple inches a little notch or a little slice about a quarter inch deep. And what that is going to do is allow me to bring this front piece up and those little slices that I took um, are going to give me the ability to curve it nicely, but the stay stitching is going to keep it from stretching out of shape. That's what all of this is about. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this on, matching up the edges of both of the pieces together, curving it where it needs to be. Once I have this pinned on, I'm going to sew it at a 5 8 inch seam allowance, um, you know, all the way down. And do we press the seams open? Hmm. They actually want you to baste it first before you stitch it, but I don't think that's necessary for my fabric. If I was using a very ill-behaved fabric, I might. I might, you know, like that linen sometimes doesn't behave very well. But for the knit that I'm using, I don't see a problem with it. They don't actually tell you how to press your seams um, here. It looks like they're going to have you press them both towards the sides, you know, so that's what I'm assuming. So that is what I shall do. After I stitch it at 5 8 press the entire seam allowance towards the side front. Okay, so this is what my front looks like right now. And it's a standard princess seam type of a front, which is great. Um, I'm leaving my seam allowances whole, complete, and everything. Um, I don't think it needs to be trimmed. It's going to be encased in lining and keeping them complete. You know, not grading them, not trimming them down or anything. will make it easier in case I need to make any alterations on the dress. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and put this aside. I'm just going to pin it onto my dress form to keep it out of the way and keep it unwrinkled and get my back pieces. It looks like the next one I need is my center back. Now in the pattern, there are two different center back pieces. One is for lining because this little part is a little different and one is for the fashion fabric. So you can pay attention to which is which. I have a lot of circles and notches to mark on here. And um, let me grab my zipper. This circle here is for the bottom of my zipper. So because I'm using a longer one, 
just looking here. Um, yeah, I'm going to use that placement. I'll just be shortening my zipper, which is fine. I might go ahead and do that while I'm thinking of it. Um, but I like my zippers to be slightly longer than what it calls for. It just makes it a lot easier for the way I put in invisible zippers. So if this is the point, if I line the start of my zipper up here at this circle and at this circle here is where they want it to end, I am going to give myself a couple more inches down here for where I'm going to end my zipper. So um, I'm going to go ahead and yeah, I'm going to go ahead and make a little thread tack around here at the bottom and then I'll show you how I trim it off. Okay, so this is the little tack. For some reason my camera looks dark. I don't know. I'm going to see if I can change the lighting. But just put on with a little thread, tied a knot in there. And what I'm going to do is put a little dab of my clear nail polish on the threads on the underside, which is where this is, just to keep them glued together because I do not want that to come apart, you know? We just don't need that kind of aggravation. Now, what I'm going to do is get some different scissors um, and cut oh, about an inch and a half below that point and then cut up so that I am about a half inch below that point and take the teeth out right there. Okay, so now this is what it looks like. Okay, this is the right side because it's invisible. That's the side with the little tab on it. This is the wrong side. And I'm just going to fold these little pieces over. Um, it's a little long, so let me clip this. Come on, Marie. So that one is over to that side. Clip it over here to this side. And then I'm just going to run a quick stitch over this. Um, so basically, it's like a little triangle there at the bottom. I, once I get it stitched, I'll show it to you and my fingers won't be in the way and it'll make more sense. Okay, so that's what it looks like. You know, you can do it all kinds of ways. You can put a piece of fabric at the end. Um, you can just leave it hanging, whatever. I just choose to do it this way this time. No other reason than that. So now I can put my uh, zipper back on my waiting table there. And there's a lot of things I need to mark. So with my scrap of leather hole punch and clipping my notches, I'm going to mark down here. There's a couple dots and this fold line. I'm going to um, indicate where that fold line is too by punching a hole at the bottom. And I already have one marked here at the top of the fold line. And then I will draw that line in. Okay. And here is a dot for the bottom of the zipper, a dot for the top of the zipper. Over here, a dot too. We don't have sleeves, so I think that has to do with where we stop stitching. So let me go ahead, clip notches, make dots, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got everything marked that was on the pattern onto my two back pieces. And the next instruction is to stay stitch over here. Move my camera. Stay stitch from this point to the waist. Again, the waist does not have a specific mark. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is just lay my pattern back on top. See where the waistline according to the pattern is, which is right about here. And I will do my row of stay stitching from this point all the way up here, again at a half inch seam allowance. All right, so the instructions want you to sew the side back to the back piece before you put the zipper on. I'm going to put my zipper on right now while it's just two, two little back pieces. So this is the right side of my fabric, and I am just transferring over because I have it marked on the wrong side, everything. But onto the right side, I'm transferring over the top and bottom marks for my invisible zipper. And if you've been around 
my videos for a while, you know that the first thing I grab when I'm putting in a zipper is my double-sided water-soluble basting tape, which is the best thing in the world for zippers. So let me just double check if that fits. It does fit with a little extra. That's perfect for what I need. Okay, so what I want is the teeth of this zipper to be at the 5 8 inch mark so that, or depth, okay, so that when I continue the seam below the zipper, it all lines up in one big line. So, looking for my ruler, here you are. The zippers are all different. The, if I unroll, because invisible zippers are rolled up, if you unroll it, okay, and I'm measuring from right next to the teeth over, it is just over a quarter inch, okay? I'm gonna call it a quarter inch. So if I want my seam allowance to be at five eighths of an inch, that means I'm going to be needing to place my zipper so that it is set in, okay? Um, but the first thing I'm gonna do is go over to my ironing board and iron my zipper. And while it is unzipped, um, unrolling it a little bit and ironing it flat to try to keep that whole little tooth area unrolled. Okay, so it's all ironed. Don't zip it back up, okay? Leave it unzipped because as soon as you zip it up, it'll curl everything back up again. And we don't need that kind of trouble today. So I am going to put my ruler at just over, at about 3 eighths of an inch. That's what I'm going to do, 3 eighths of an inch actually slightly less, slightly less than 3 eighths of an inch. That's what I'm gonna do. And I am just going to draw a line all the way down. I don't have this laying perfectly straight. That's why I keep turning my ruler um, to where this bottom point is. Okay, I'm just gonna lay it like that. I need to draw this line on both sides. Okay, so here's my line. This dot right here, that is a piece of thread, this dot marks where the end of my zipper sewing is going to be. Okay, this is the top. So just to try it out, if I put my zipper face down, which means the little tab is facing down, and I lay the edge of my zipper tape along that line I just drew, so like right here, my question is, is it 5 eighths of an inch from the edge of the fabric to the teeth? And it looks there about 5 eighths of an inch. Maybe slightly more, but not enough to make a huge difference. So that's where my zipper is going to be placed. So instead of pinning it or hand basting it, what I do is I use my tape. So I'm flipping it over. So my little tab is upright here. I need to get my water-soluble basting tape. It has paper on the back. It can be finicky, but really, to me, it's worth the headache. Um, actually, I need to start the stickiness, and my zipper's a little bit longer, so I'm actually gonna start the stickiness of my tape, you know, a little bit higher, maybe about, oh, half an inch or so above my little thread tack there. If there's extra, I can always peel it off later. And I'm just placing it right along the edge of my zipper tape. I'm gonna put it all the way up to the top. And actually, while I'm doing it, I'm gonna put it on this side too, on the right side, on the side with a little tab. Okay, now I'm just going to pick a side to work on first. So I'm gonna pick this side, you know. It doesn't really matter which one, just pick one. And um, you can see I stopped my tape right about where the zipper stop is there. And I'm going to go ahead and peel off the paper backing of the tape. Just pulling it up. If it looks like the sticky part is wanting to peel up, we'll just push it back down. It'll be okay. Okay, so now that I have this little point here where the top of the zipper is, I'm gonna place that where my top dot is. Okay, in line with that top dot with the edge of my tape at the edge of my line that I drew. 
and I'm just going to continue placing the edge of my tape along that line and pushing it down all the way. Now when I get to the point where this dot is, I am going to mark that. Let me find a white pencil because that will show up here. At this point, where did you go little point? Here you are. I'm just going to draw a line straight across here, okay? Because I'm going to, I mean, that will come in handy when we match the other side up. All right, so now I need to get my invisible zipper foot. And I'm going to sew from this point all the way down, at least to this point, maybe even past if I want to, but at least to this point. That's where I'm planning on stopping. And having a little extra below it is fine. That will make it easier. So let me go ahead and get that stitched on. In case you don't know, um, there are all different kinds of invisible zipper feet, but since I'm using my Meister, this is the tall shank one that I have. It works for her. And she has a couple grooves, and I just pick the groove that works with the side I'm doing. I have two grooves, so depending on the side and direction, I can use it for both. Um, but the zipper coils go through the groove and push it over to the side so that I can sew straight through that hole. That's how this works. All right, I have it stitched on. So what I'm gonna do is just put these next to each other with the stoppers lined up. Down here, I'm holding it, stretching it nice and tight. And I'm watching where that white mark is. And I am gonna come over here and on the direct other side, draw another white mark, okay? That's going to help me line it up over here. Does that work? Does that work? Let's see. That actually looks a little bit low, doesn't it? Okay, hang on a second. Let me move that up just a bit. The top of this white line is my mark. All right. On my fabric layered, the side that I already sewed the zipper onto is on top of the other one. All right, so if I was folding this, you wouldn't be able to see my zipper, okay? I'm just gonna fold it back a little bit so you can. So I have this side now, and I'm layering them like this because that way they can meet up. And I'm gonna need to pull the, sticky, the paper off the sticky tape on the back and carefully place it so the top of this line is going to be in line with that dot and this line spacing in so I can get started bringing this up. So first step is to pull my backing tape off. Okay, I'm trying to get the camera in so you can see close up. I have the backing paper pulled off so this is nice and sticky. And at this point, right here, okay, at the top of my little white line, I need that to match up with this circle, which is the top of my zipper, okay? I'm gonna place it on there and also making sure that the edge of my tape is lining up with the edge of my line that I drew, okay? Now I'm just gonna press down a couple inches and then skip all the way up here to the top and make sure that my stopper, if you can see, the stopper is right here, that that is in line with this dot, okay? And again, with the edge of the tape at the edge of the line that I drew. Okay, so now that this is at the right place and this is at the right place, now I'm gonna stretch the whole thing out and try to carefully match up everything in between. And that's looking pretty good, I think. All right, so if I lay these next to each other, they should, should line up, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead and sew this side of my tape on. Oops, it looks like it's sticking out a bit far right there. And I love the, the uh, basting tape because you can just pull it off and stick it back on if something doesn't look right, you know? Okay. So I'm gonna use my invisible zipper foot and sew this side on from this dot down here. Um, and this one I just went all the way up and I'll probably do the same thing here where I just stitch all the way up to the top. Okay, so I just sewed it. It's still open on the bottom. That's what I want. 
Um, move this out of the way, get these lined up, and I'm going to zip it up for the first time, which is sometimes a little tricky because, you know, having ironed everything flat, it needs to learn to curve over again. So let's pull it up. And that looks very nice, very nice indeed. It looks like a seam. And having a slightly darker zipper doesn't bother anything at all because it's not visible. So that's lovely. Now I need to sew the bottom of this. And I wait until after I put the zipper in because um, if I sew the bottom first, you might get a pucker in here and that's just absolutely no good. So this has this strange little vent going on, so I need to be able to see where my stitching line is going to be. And this is giving me a little bit of a fit here. So let me get everything laid out nicely. Okay, so now I have it pinned together here. And these are a couple of the marks from the pattern we transferred over. There's an upper dot and a lower dot. What I need to do is um, put a regular zipper foot or a narrow foot onto my sewing machine. There's some notches here I have matched up. You're not going to take the extra off. Okay, leave that on. We're just pushing it up a little bit here. And I'm going to put one more pin up here. And I'm going to need to get my narrow foot or my irregular zipper foot. You can get right up against something. So that works sometimes. You're going to want to get as close to this where you ended your stitching here as you can to start your stitching. And take it down at 5 8 7 inch all the way to this second dot right there. Okay, so that is stitched. So here is my seam from the right side. Let's see. The zipper goes to this point here and then I have seam going through there. And I have it pressed open on the inside for right now. This is still loose, which is fine. I'm just going to leave it that way. That's that's perfectly fine. Um, so this part is done. Let me raise you up. I'm going to go ahead and put this right side up now and get my side seams, um, my sides, my side backs. That's the word I'm looking for. My side back sections out. And I need to get those marked so I can join them to uh, my center back piece. So I've got my side piece down here. There are no dots on this one, just a bunch of notches. And I do believe that I have clipped all of those notches. So I'm just going to take my tissue paper off and try to carefully match up this side here to my center back. Okay, so everything looks like it is matching up very nicely. There's really only one notch up here to match up. Everything else is just a straight, nice straight shot. So what I'm going to do is sew this at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And it looks like they want us to press this seam towards uh, the side, the side back piece. Okay, so now that I have my front section complete and my back section complete, I am going to sew them together at the side seams just from the underarm area all the way down to the bottom. Again, at a 5 8 inch, my fingers will work here, a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And after that, I will be pressing my side seams open, I believe. Okay, well, hang on a second. Now, now that I look at this in the previous page, because this is page two, um, they didn't show this, but it looks like on here they want you to press those seam allowances open. So when I go to press my side seams open, I will then go back and press my back seams open. This is the one between the, um, the center back and the side back. I am taking a peek to see if I see the fronts. Now here on this picture, on this picture, the front lining is pressed open. So I think that they want that pressed open also. So you know what? I'm going to press them all open. I think that they just didn't. They wanted to keep it a mystery until the end or something. But I'm going to go ahead and press all of my seam allowances open because I can. And because I think that's what they want. They were just being shy about it. Okay, so this is how she is right now. 
I'm going to need to take a break because I got to put my lining into the dryer, take care of some things. But I wanted to show you, she's just a nice basic sheath dress, you know. And I did make her out of knit, even though the pattern did not call for it, but I think it's going to be fine. Now when I'm sewing it, uh, because it's not specifically a stretch knit pattern, there's no stretch incorporated into any of my seams because it doesn't need to be because there's a zipper to get in and you know no sleeves it's going to be easy to to wear so um, I'm just treating it as I would treat a woven at this point but this is it it's a basic looking looking dress if I was to put her little jacket over it just to try you know because I'm curious now what it's going to look like how do we have so far? Oops, I need to push these pins down here. I just have the, the little shoulder area pinned into the dress form here. Does it look anything like the pattern envelope is the question. Well, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. I think so. I think so. But you know, this is not the final reveal. This is close to the final reveal, but it's not it. But I actually think it's really cute. So, like I said, I'm going to take a break, do some laundry, take care of a couple other things, and I'll be back shortly. Okay, so I am cutting out my lining pieces, and I wanted to show you the center back piece is a totally separate piece just for lining. But the center front and the two sides are, you're reusing the same piece, except at the very bottom here, there's a different bottom cutting line. For the lining. So what I'm doing is I'm just cutting it out as is. And then once I have everything cut out, I just come down here at the bottom, fold it up, and then I cut straight across there. And then that way I'm not going to damage my pattern. Okay, so I have one more piece to cut out. And this rayon will bimber rayon. It, it's, it's like silk and it's going to fray if I don't Surge it so I will be surging around each piece. So just know that ahead of time um, And I'm going to be starting with my center front. It's going to be very similar to what we did for the main dress um, Where for the center front I'm going to take it first I'm going to surge all the way around it and then just like before stay stitching from the very top to approximately where the waist is you know, so I'll be doing that to my front lining piece. Well, here's my thing. I 99% of the time only use black or white thread on my serger, but I had a rose color thread and a wine color thread on cones that I've had for a long time. I said, well, if I'm not going to use them ever, you know, this is if I'm basically, if I'm not going to use it now, I won't use it. So I switched out my looper threads to those and then stuck a regular thread on my needle. So the combination of new threads and extremely lightweight fabric, you know, which I love, and finicky stuff getting all my tensions reset, I had a time getting around. And so what I have decided is really all I need to surge are down the long straights. I don't really need to do up around the tops of the sleeves and everything because this part's going to be totally encapsulated up here. It's just below the armhole that it's going to be open. So for right for now on for the rest of my princess seam what I'm going to do is just surge the long stretches coming just straight down. I'm not going to be going around all of the little the little divots and turns up here. I think that that will be good. But I have stay stitched this, so that is ready. So I need to get my side front piece. Um, and just like last time, I will, um, I will do my surging down the long straights of it. And then we're gonna pin it together, possibly clipping this part so that it can flex a little bit more so that we can get ready to sew these seams here. Okay, so I've got my front, side front here pinned on and just like last time I had to make little clips to that stay stitching to make it flex. But I wanna show you these nifty things. I bought these because someone recommended them to me months ago. They're called fork 
options for really silky fabrics because a lot of times on this I would put a pin in and it just wants to fall out because it's so lightweight and silky. But these things, it's a double pin and uh, if you've never used them before, they're fabulous because when you put them in, there's like some tension between them to either squeeze together, you know, which pushes them, wants, makes them want to push apart and it holds them in really well. Those pins aren't going anywhere. They're super fine, super sharp. So yeah, that's a good thing. So I'm going to have to work on keeping them um, in their own little box and nice and separate from all of my other pins. So just thought I would share that fun little find. So I've got this pinned on. I'll pin the other side on also. Do just like I did last time. Sew this seam at 5 8 of an inch and I am pressing these seam allowances open. Alright, so with the front and side front done, I'm working on my center back piece, which is shaped a little bit different from the other back piece. Down here, there's a couple circles I need to mark. The circle here at the bottom of the zipper, because when I sew this, I'm only sewing this way. I think this way and that way. Not sure. We'll get there. Um, there's a bunch of other dots going on up here. Not too sure exactly what that one is for yet, but um, these probably have to do with there's a lingerie strap snap. A lingerie strap snap. Yeah, that goes right here. And I think that's what it's for, but I'm not going to worry about that right now because it's basically where the outside seam is. It's like a quarter inch in on each side. So that's easy to figure out there. So I'm marking these dots on it. I am going to go ahead and serge just down the main sides after I mark those circles. And then just like the main piece from the waistline area up here on this part that joins the side from about right here where this waistline is up to here. I'm going to put a row of stay stitching at a half inch. Okay, so I got that stay stitching done up on top and there's one more little part to add stay stitching to and that is down here. I'm going to draw some lines because you know how I love to do that. And I'm going to draw them at a half inch seam allowance through this dot to this one and then just for fun, because I can, I'm going to draw this one down a little bit, okay? And what I'm supposed to do is do stay stitching, I'd say starting about an inch below it to this dot and then following this line up an inch or so, because we're going to need to clip all the way up to this point, you know, not crossing the stitching line, but just up to it. In case it isn't obvious, I just realized this is an odd thing. This is where the slit is in the back. So this is the lining for the vent. It's shaped differently on the main fabric, but this, that's what this is back here. Okay, so now I have my two sides here, and after I put my stay stitching in, I iron just this little part to erase all of my marks. And I am clipping right up to that stitching line. Okay, like right there. And now what I need to do is along the stitching line here, I need to fold up this seam and press it up there. And this is at 5 eighths, I believe. Do they say? Well, they don't say, but it looks like 5 eighths to me, okay? or half inch or whatever is closer for you. So then I need to press it down here too. So I will, when I come back, I will have this press that way, this press that way, and the opposite on this side. Okay, so now I am placing them right sides together. So my folded parts are on the outside. Use my, oh, I got a regular pin in my nifty pin thing. I mean, use my nifty pins to pin from this circle, which is the bottom of my zipper, okay, all the way down to the bottom here. And I need to sew this at 5 eighths of an inch from this dot to the edge here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is press it open just from this point up to where it's sewed. I am not going to press anything else up here. So there you go, that's pressed open. Now I'm going to put this aside for a second and grab my side back piece. And I believe 
that um, all I'm going to do with this is serge around the edges, you know, clip my notches, serge around the edges, and then I'm going to attach my side back piece to this piece here. Okay, so I have my entire back piece put together. I am going to put my front piece here on top of it, right sides together, and sew up the side seams again at 5 8 of an inch and then press those seam allowances open. Okay, so at this point I have a tube of dress in lining. And I'm going to leave this inside out for right now. Actually, I'm going to take a little break, go take care of some things. And later on tonight, I will be back. We're going to try to get at least another big chunk of this taken care of. Hello, I am back. I took a break, went out, mowed the lawn, made my dinner, and I am back. And I have my fashion fabric dress. Um, let's see, what am I doing? I have this one right side out. I have this one inside out. And I'm going to slide my dress inside of my lining here and try to roughly get everything matched up. So where's my zipper? Here it is. So I'm just going to start with where the opening on my lining should match up to where my zipper is. And I'm just going to pin that corner and work my way around. Um, if you can see here, like that. Okay, I'm just going to pin it all over the place just so I can see where I am right now. Okay, so those mystery dots that I didn't know what they were for are going to come into play here. So I've got my dress pinned together. This is half of it. Trust me, the other half looks the same. It's over here, that way. Um, so what I need to do, and I am just going to get my pen and kind of draw on here to show, I need to sew out here. This is where my zipper ends, you know, right there. And I can see the dot where that is. At 5 8 of an inch, I need to come all the way up here, okay, up to the top here. I got my lining on the inside. All is good there. Then on this side, remember we have this dot right above where the side seam comes in? Well, you only sew from this dot down, and that goes all the way around here, and there should be another dot right here, which I so, oh, there it is. I have it on the wrong side. Okay, so I'm going to sew up to this dot here. So basically all the way from just before this side seam all the way around to the center side seam and just above here, leaving this flappy open, this flappy open. And then from the front, I do from the top down to the V and back up. And then this type of treatment at that armhole and everything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that at 5 8 of an inch, I believe. It looks like it doesn't say anything to the contrary, so we're going to assume it's 5 8 of an inch. Okay, so I've got it all sewn. Now, the instructions say first I need to trim or clip to this front seam there so I can flip that right. Um, it says trim your seam allowance and then understitch as far as possible. So um, I'm debating on how I am going to do this and I think I'm just going to pink it. Um, I don't need to grade it because my lining is so ultra light that it doesn't really make a difference. But I think that by pinking the um, knit, my heavier fashion fabric, it will eliminate some of the bulk and well, it's already knit, so it will be flexible no matter what. But if this was a woven that was inflexible, it would help that. So I'm just going to trim all of my seam allowances that I just stitched like that. So they're about half the width that they were to start with. Now I've decided that this part that we've left open here, I'm not pinking that because eventually I'm going to need to sew this. And I want to know 
the actual distance that I'm sewing to get it accurate. And this is, you know, just a little piece of a strap. So if there's a little excess bulk there, I don't think it's going to make a big difference. Okay, so I've just pulled them, you know, apart here. So I still have my straps kind of inverted. And I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to understitch this. Um, because... I need to get my machine in there. And what they want is you to understitch it towards the lining. So what that means is push the lining, I mean push the seam allowances, those ones I just pinked, over underneath the lining side and put a, a row of straight stitches right, right about there on the lining side, okay, holding that seam allowance underneath. Um, I am going to start in the very back because that's kind of where it is open here. I'm not sure if I introduced you. Today's machine of the day is once again Pearl, the beautiful Meister machine. And so I am just going to tip the camera down onto her plate because I'm just going to be figuring this out as I go and you can come along with me. Okay, starting with my back opening, I have my seam allowances underneath the lining, and I am just going to back it up a sec to lock it in, and just make a straight stitch, and we'll just see how we go here. See how far I can get up the uh, little arm strap. So far I've only been able to do a couple inches and it's already getting kind of tight. And that's about it. Um, I'm just going to back it up, lock it in, pull that off. Clip my threads and go to the next stop. So this whole first little area I was able to sew from here to here. What is that? It's about five inches, okay? So now I'm going to go till I can get it back in place and I'm going to start coming down the front neckline area, I believe. No, no, no. I'm doing that swoopy part that's going to go through the sides and under the armhole and my presser foot's coming off because she's so frustrated with me. Hang on, okay. I need to... That's about as far back as I'm going to be able to get it, okay? And I'm making sure there is nothing else underneath that presser foot except for what I want. I'm going to set her down. She's backed up. She's going forward. And I'm just going to travel along here. And again, all the seam allowances are underneath the lining side. This is the side seam here, so I'm going to start to wrap up towards the front. Um, how far can I get? I'm going to be able to get almost to where the princess seam is, I think. And it's starting to get tight. Let's see. All right. I think that's good. I'm just going to get it to the princess seam, pull it off, and then do the V. And that's just how I'm working it. I'm just kind of getting it started where I can wedge myself in and then go until I can't go any further. I just ran out of bobbin and I had to wind a bobbin and I love to use my little sidewinder thingies. And I just was watching it and I noticed this little label that's in there. Now this is just a little device for threading bobbins. You know, you put a spool on, you put a bobbin on, and it it makes a little noise, winds a bobbin. But it has all of these FCC rules on it. Isn't that having to do with communications and transmissions? And I'm not getting conspiracy-ish here, but it says that the device must receive any interference 
Wait, the, this, this device must accept any interference received, including interference that may cause undesired operation. What in the world does that even mean? If anyone knows how these little things can get undesired interference, which can do undesired things, let me know because that's going to keep me up all night. Anyway, let me put my bobbin back in and finish my understitching. Okay, as soon as I got done understitching it, I went to my ironing board and just everywhere that was understitched, I ironed to try to get it to behave. And here in the very front, the lining from the understitching here kept wanting to peek through. And actually what I'm going to do, if I can find some little scissors, well, I'll find a seam ripper. I'm going to clip that understitching stitch from right at the base of that V and maybe one or two on either side because I feel like that is trying to make that lining pull towards the front. And I don't want to see that lining in the front. So... You know, just pulling a few stitches out from that very little center area. Just ignore I have a little dog downstairs who, um, it's dark outside. And we got a new front door that has glass all the way down to the dog level. Because I thought, okay, if they can see out the door, then they won't bark every time they hear a noise and they think there's something out there. Because they'll be able to see there's nothing out there. Well, now he sees reflections of things at night from the inside onto the glass, so he must bark at that. So that's what he's doing. Anyhow, now that I've done that, I need to flip everything inside out. So I am looking at the lining side here. And I'm going to be working on this back zipper area. So let me just shake it all down so it's hanging like it should here. Okay. So I started it actually up here at the top. I'm going to be just take one side at a time here, folding the edge of my lining under 5 8 7 inch. Put that underneath the zipper. I'm going to pin that into place and I'm going to come back with my needle and thread and um, just slip stitch this on here so that the stitches aren't shown from the outside but attaching this lining this folded lining to the back of the zipper tape okay i'm going to do that for both sides of the zipper so when i get done it's going to be attached all the way from the top to this point where the zipper stops hello everybody welcome to the next day i have the zipper lining slip stitched in okay so that is attached in the back so what we need to do now is connect the shoulder strap seam um, from the back to the front so let me turn the camera down okay so first of all here is one of my underarms this is two uh, pieces this one is a back this is a front make sure you got a front to a back okay now what I'm going to do is open all of this up here and remember when we're under stitching we wanted all of the seam allowances to go towards the lining. So I am pressing those seam allowances both towards the lining here and like that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and pin that part first because I want, I want these seams to match up. That's really important to me. Okay, now I'm going to pin the edge. You have to kind of open it up a little bit, matching up the edges over here. There is a notch in the middle, but I'm more concerned with the edge here and the seam over here. And then the same over here opening this up and matching up the very edges and that's going to give us one straight seam to make so let's see do they tell us mm, they don't give us a seam allowance so that means five eighths of an inch okay so it looks kind of like this so i need to sew straight across here at five eighths of an inch i'm going to do that to both sides of my straps so now that that seam is sewed, I am just going to roughly with my fingers 
press this seam allowance open so that then I can fold it um, this way. Okay, so let me go ahead and just put a pin on this outside edge just to hold that where I want it, okay? Now the side that we left open before, over here, um, all of this needs to get tucked in and slip stitched, but to me it looks like I have a little bit of strain going on here, so I am just going to put a couple little clips into the edge of my lining fabric and see if that's going to make it lay a little bit flatter here. So with my main fabric turned in about 5 8 7 inch, I'm going to line up my lining fabric so it sits just barely inside of it, you know, like that so that my main fabric peeks out a little bit since this won't be understitched. Doing that is a good way to keep the lining hidden. So once I have all of this pinned together, this opening part, I'm going to need to slip stitch that closed. But I want to get it pinned nicely first. And part of that might be because I am using a knit for my outer fabric. You know, yours might not need as much clipping. So anyhow, now I have it all pinned together. So I'm going to try to very carefully so it doesn't show from the outside, which it definitely looks like it does here. I need to pull that out there some more. So I'm going to try to slip stitch it so that from out here I don't see any stitches, but it attaches the lining here to the seam allowance of my fashion fabric. My little straps here done, I need to do some work at the bottom. So I'm just going to fold this down and actually pull my lining up so I only have my main fabric here and I am looking down at the bottom back. All right, so remember these two dots? Well, what I need to do is fold this together at this diagonal corner. Um, this is cut off at a diagonal here. That's what I'm folding, all right? So I'm folding it right sides together. And on this side, I can see this dot right there, and I can see that dot right here. And I need to sew between those dots. Do I go all the way through? Yes, I do. So I'm going to sew a line from here. It's at 5 8 7 inch, just all the way through. Okay, so once I sewed it, I pressed it open, and so basically that point gets created when you press it open like that, okay? So now I have those pressed on both sides, and we should be flipping it now. Are we? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Okay, so let's flip this whole thing right side out, and I'll be pressing this corner again, but that gives us a really nice place to start the hem. Okay, so I'm going to do something slightly different. Not much, though, from the directions. I went over to my ironing board and just pressed my hem all the way around. It's about a two-inch hem. And in the instructions, what they want you to do is to uh, hand baste the very bottom edge all the way around just to hold this fold in place while you stitch your hem. And um, since I'm going to be doing it all by hand and I have it pinned pretty carefully, I'm not going to do that because honestly, the reason is I've been working on machines a lot the last couple days, trying to get a bunch done. And this is sore. It's very sore. So um, I'm just going to do a blind stitch to get this stitched into the place, but not put an extra row here. Okay, so let me show you the way I'm going to stitch this. I'm starting over here. Got my needle and thread, like throwing around. And I'm going to fold it so that I have about a quarter inch of this sticking out. Now I'm not finishing this off because I am going to be move, um, 
attaching my lining to it so it's not going to be visible anyway. I need my bobbin, I mean my thimble because I can't sew without them apparently. So I am pushing my needle this direction but traveling that direction. Okay, so I just took a stitch down here. I'm going to catch just a couple of the back sides of the threads up here. Then move over, take a stitch on the hem and come up here and just take one or two threads of the back of the fabric up on top. Okay, and I'm just going to keep on going all the way across and this should not take very much time. You can see I'm moving quite speedily here. Okay, I want to show you something that I've run into here and because the next step of this process is to work on the bottom of the lining and they want you to attach it to the um, hem of the skirt. What they want, and if this works for you, this is what they want. They want you to turn under the edge of your lining and place it so that um, basically the raw edges match up. You turn it under and you whip stitch this down. Okay, so that then a fold will be here and you know all is well. Well, I think it's because the knit fabric grows and it when I place my lining down on top of it, my lining is slightly snugger. Let's see if I can show you one place here. So if I line up the seam allowance for the side seam here and let's see here. Here, these two are the, a good example. All right, so this is in the front actually. So this is lined up and take that pin out. This one is lined up, but when I pull this tight, this is not tight because it's knit, you know, it's slightly different. And I don't want to stitch this to this fabric because I'm afraid that from the outside it could look a little bit restrained and puckered-ish, okay? So let me tell you how I am going to do this. Um, get all of this straightened out back down here. Now for the very back, I do, I do want to... Um, attach this part, okay? And so that's that's a given. I'm just gonna pin that in place. And basically it's the same things. I'm attaching it so that the raw edge of my fold, which is pressed under five eighths of an inch is lining up with the raw edge of this little corner here, okay? So let me just pin that up here so it can sit still and do the same thing over on this side. So I am going to uh, whip stitch this up to about this point, about an inch down over up to right about here. But I am going to hem this lining separately and I'm going to be turning it up about an inch and a half to two inches, which will give me a finished length an inch shorter. That's what I want. I want this lining to end up an inch shorter than the outside. Okay, so I can just go ahead and pin this up, go around to each of my little seam allowances, find that same distance. And what do I have here? I'm just eyeballing everything. Looks like an inch and a half. So I'm going to pin this up an inch and a half from the raw edge to the fold all the way around on my lining first. Okay, so at this point, I have my little vent slip stitched closed. This is attached all the way here, but this has been sewn. You can see my stitching, you know, it's on very light fabric, so it's apparent, but it is lining, okay? And it, since it's surged, it's fine. And so this is separate from this, but I think that's actually going to work because with the slip slightly, ever so slightly snugger than the outside, that's going to work 
you know, as a undergarment type thing, you know, where it's going to make it a lot more smooth on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and put this up onto my dress form and take our final peek at it. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sew and spin, and move the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This life pleases me. Things plain to see, I'm living my bucolic life. 